Hey guys, hope you had a good weekend. Uh, first section for this week is going to take our inequalities from last week um, and now just build upon them. And we're gonna talk about systems of inequalities. So if you remember system of equation was where we had two lines and we looked at where the two lines crossed and there was that single point. Uh, well, now that we've got systems of inequalities, we're gonna have two lines, solid or dotted with shaded regions. The solution for a system is going to be where those shaded regions overlap. And then all of the points in that sort of overlap area is going to be a solution. Uh, so we'll look at two parts. The first part we'll look at is just testing a point to see if it is a solution for that system. And then we'll talk about graphing. it. Um, so let's go over here to the dot cam for the first part of this, which is going to simply be testing points. Um, and so the first IXL section is just going to ask you, is this point a solution to the system of inequalities? Now, if you remember, if we wanted to solve a system of equations, we would plug that point in and then see what happened. Um, now we're going to, to plug it in, but we're going to have the inequality symbols. So we're going to plug it into both inequalities and it has to work in both for it to be a solution. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to plug in 1 comma 1 for x and y. So we'll put it in the first equation here. So we're going to get 15 times 1 plus 1 is less than 16. And then I'm going to plug it into the second equation, 17 times 1 plus 20 times 1 is less than or equal to 7. So you have to plug it into both. Now, 15 times 1. <clears throat> and then we get 16 is less than 16. Is 16 less than 16? And the answer to that is no, this is bad news. We get the sad face here. I don't even have to test the second one because I already know it doesn't work for this one. Now, if it was less than or equal to, then it would work. If we test this one too, you'll see that this one fails really bad as well. So 17 plus 27 is less than or equal to seven. So that fails. So basically, if it fails when you plug in, is this one a solution to the system of inequalities? And you would say no. All right, so let's just go ahead and test another one here. Go ahead and take a moment and plug in the X and the Y value into both inequalities and see if it's a yes or a no. All right, let's take a look and see what we got here. We're gonna plug in the X and the Y into both equations. So for the first equation, I get 10. And then in the second equation, <clears throat> so for the first one here, it says 10 is less than 11, which is going to be a good thing for the first one. So let's test the second one. 10 is less than or equal to three plus seven. And that is true only because of the inequality. So that one works there because I had the equal to. So is this a solution? This one would be a yes, because both statements were true. So remember, before it was always equals. Well, now we are testing for true statements, but we're just testing them with inequality symbols instead. Now let's look at the visual and see what happens when we actually were going to do this. So we're going to go through a couple of examples here for graphing systems of inequalities. <clears throat> and we'll look at varying levels here. I'm going to use some colored highlighters here so we can see the overlap real easy. So the first one here is y is less than 5. So remember, this is a horizontal line. So I'm going to draw a horizontal line at 5. And because it's less than, it's going to be a dotted line. And then where are y values smaller? Y values are smaller below. So we're just going to shade all of that in here. And then the second line on the same grid is going to be a vertical line. And that's going to be a vertical line, a solid vertical line, because it's equal to at negative three. We're going to go ahead and draw a solid line vertical here at negative three.
and it says x is less than or equal to negative three. So where our x value is smaller, that's gonna to be to the left. And so I'm gonna go ahead and shade this blue. Now the solution to the system of inequalities is the overlap. So this region right here is the only part that is the actual solution. Now I went ahead and shaded all of the graph that needed to be shaded for orange and all of the graph that's shaded for blue because that helps me visually to see where the two colors overlap. But the solution to the system of inequalities is the area that is bound by this dotted line and this solid line and then this shaded region here. So when you're going to do this on IXL, you're only going to shade the region of overlap. All right, you're not going to have the luxury of coloring it in like I did here on the paper. So you're going to have to maybe get a piece of graph paper and sketch it to see what area to shade, or you're going to be able to do it mentally in your head. Okay, so let's take a look at another example here. <clears throat> y is less than or equal to negative two. So this is a horizontal line at negative two, and it's going to be solid. And y is less than, so it wants the values that are below, because that's where y values are smaller. Now, the second one is in a y equals mx plus b form. So this one's going to be diagonal. So we're going to start my y-intercept at negative 1. It's going to be right there. <clears throat> and my slope is a over 1. So I'm going to go up 8 over 1. It's right there. And I'm going to have a dotted line for this one. So as I draw my dotted line here, <laughs> and y is less than, so the y values that are below the line, so I'm going to start right here and say, okay, I'm going to go below the line, so that means I'm going to shade everything that is below the line here. Now, the orange would continue all the way here as well, but you'll see that the overlapped region is right here, so that is the region bound by those two lines. Let's take a look at one more that are both in MX plus B, and then I'll show you what it looks like on IXL. So this first one here is negative two, and a slope that is negative four over one. And this is going to make a solid line. So let's go ahead and make my solid line. I'm not gonna shade just yet because I wanna see if I can just get the shaded region in one step. So let's take the blue line here at negative five. And my slope is one over one. And this one is going to be a dotted line. So if I go back over here and say, okay, let's look at the orange line. The orange line is less than, so that's gonna be below. So I'm gonna shade below the orange line. So that's gonna be everything that's down here. So this whole area below, I'm gonna pull down from the orange line. So we're gonna pull down. I'm just gonna like make little markings here to remind me that I'm gonna pull down because that's where they're less than. And then for the blue line, y is greater than, so I'm gonna pull up. So for the blue line, I'm gonna pull up. So if I was to look now at where those two regions are going to overlap, now I can fully color them in, but if you notice what I did here, I pulled the orange ones down because it's gonna be below, and I pulled the blue ones up. So if we look at where those two areas are going to meet each other, 
they're going to meet each other right here. So this is going to be the shaded region. So if I was to shade all of the orange in below, you'd see it go here, and I'm going to go over into this region, but I'm not going to fill it in because I want to treat it just for the answer. And then the blue regions are going to shade up here. So that's going to be right here. So what does that double shaded region mean? That means every single point that is in this area, if I was to plug them into both inequalities, it would work. All right, so this is the solution to the system of inequalities. Now let's take a peek at what that's going to look like when we go into IXL. Uh, so if we go ahead and share screen here with our IXL problems, we're going to have the systems of inequalities. So you're going to see that they give you two equations here, and we're going to graph them. So I'm going to go down here, and we're going to say, okay, I've got a vertical line here at negative six. So here's my vertical line at negative six. It's equal to, so is it solid or dotted? It's solid. And it wants X values that are bigger. Well, you'll notice I can't shade yet because I have to make the second line. So let's make the second line. Y is less than six. So I need a horizontal line here, solid or dotted. It's gonna be solid. Now I can pick shading. So I can shade here, 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 or here. So this is where you need to either visually do it or maybe just like I pulled the line, it might help you here. So if it says X is greater than negative six, where our X value is bigger, to the right. So I know I'm pulling to the right. And then Y is less than six. So for this one, I am pulling down. So the areas where they're gonna overlap is gonna be that area right there. <clears throat> so let's jump ahead here to one that's got some MX plus B, there we go. Y is greater than or equal to negative one. So that's a horizontal line. So we're gonna click this one here. Solid, and we're gonna click this one here, negative four, a slope that is down five, one, two, three, four, five, over one. And that one has to be dotted, so we'll make it dotted. And now where do I shade? Well, for this line here, the horizontal line is greater than, so I'm going above, I know I'm going above. And then for this y is less than negative five x minus four, that's gonna be pulling below. So I gotta pull below the dotted line. So if I pull below the dotted line, but above the horizontal, that's gonna be your shaded region. Now, how could I use the previous section to try this? Well, you can pick a point in a region and see if it works in both inequalities. So if I was to submit this, that means every point here would be true in both of these inequalities. So you would now have four regions that you would pick a point from to test it. Okay, so that's gonna be the tricky part is doing the shading in IXL because it'll only allow you to shade one of those regions for the final answer, all right? Hopefully this helps you here. Um, I would definitely go back and look at it if you need to, because we did cover two topics when it came to systems of inequalities. Um, have a great day, guys. Tomorrow you get an opportunity to work uh, and then come and see me for one-on-one -on -one questions if you need it. Uh, have a great day. I will see you guys later.